Hi and welcome to the Cloaked Hedgehogs YouTube channel. Today we're going to talk a little bit about Central and South America. About South America, it's a little bit on the complicated side for several reasons. Because one, I don't speak Spanish and two, I don't speak Portuguese. <laughs> Which kind of makes things a little bit more complicated. Especially since you're reduced to Google Translate, which <laughs> isn't always your friend. Um, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about some sightings that have appeared in news and other similar media in South America. And then I'm going to read a few of them. Like I said, I don't speak Spanish or Portuguese, so <laughs> my pronunciation of town names and such will be weird. But in Andalgala in 2016, a citizen swears he saw a werewolf. According to his neighbor, the incident occurred last Monday at about 1 a.m. at the intersection of the streets something and something else. The witness drove his motorcycle and suddenly he saw a strange animal run on two legs. It was brown and the face was almost human. The man said it ran into the entrance to a channel near the site irrigation. Down here, people in the neighborhood have reported seeing a kind of animal that walks on two legs and is as tall as a horse. To make a long story short, here we have a bit of a cluster with five sightings. Werewolves have been stealing hens in Obera, and um, and several people have seen the Lobison, which I know means werewolf, actually, in different sectors of the district, 100 hectares of this town. And the other four sightings are about... One was about some pigs being slaughtered, ripped to pieces, but not eaten. And... Um, Another man on a motorcycle was scared by something he saw. It had dark skin and big red eyes. It was similar to a dog, but it was not a dog because it measured about one and a half meters. And I don't know if that's length or height, but in the same area, there have been reports of a werewolf that howls and disturbs people's sleep. It also fights dogs in this area, and that's not good. All right, moving on. It's way too long to go deeper into all these. Here we have a hooligan werewolf who destroys part of a fence and left footprints that came up to the window. Strange, they never look into windows, do they? Oh, wait. As you can see, there are sort of two clusters in Brazil, at least. Here we have one in 2009 who ate dogs. The bastard. It was a farmer called Maria do Carmo Suarez who was watching TV and got up to turn off the kitchen light when he saw this strange animal, very large, very furry with big ears and completely black, and it was eating one of the dogs. And a few days later, this farmer found three more dogs dead, and there were pieces of them around the yard. This person said, I have never in my life seen a dog being killed like that. I could only find three legs and a head of the dogs. The rest he must have swallowed. Ew, bad, bad bad dog. <sighs> There's also this story about a girl who apparently was attacked by a werewolf in Sao Sepe or something in the south here of Brazil. Um, she was 21 and she described the creature as almost two meters tall and it was covered in black hair. And she reported this to the police and um, she said she was grabbed and held by the neck and taken to a courtyard and she tried to fight it but it didn't seem to work and then there's some strange comment about it seemed he had no skin, I have no idea what that means. 
She says it seemed it wanted to kill me. It would not stop drooling and it made a strange noise. Uh, when the neighbor turned on the light, I assume this courtyard was just her front yard or something. When the neighbor turned on the light, he fled on all fours like a dog. The victim got scratches on her arms and chest and face. And she was treated at a hospital, apparently. And she made this sketch of the creature, which I don't dare show because of copyright things. So I'm gonna link to it below instead. All right, now we're gonna listen to one story from Nicaragua and one from Mexico. This story was sent to me by a man who now lives in the United States but grew up in Nicaragua. And at the time of this incident, he was seven years old, which is horrible. My mom used to take me to stay with my grandma, who lived about three and a half miles away, close to Lake Nicaragua, which is infested with bull sharks. The area where grandma lived was under constant construction and the city was deforesting the area to make more houses. Light posts were spread throughout the area where no homes were yet built. There were creeks that went under bridges, and one could walk to other burials or parts of the neighborhood that were closer to the lake and the mountains. A lot of native people lived there. They cooked rice and beans on the stove and made homemade tortillas. My mother had a knack for sending me to those neighborhoods to buy beans and tortillas, which is what I did that afternoon. I had never believed in werewolves or witches or anything supernatural or unknown, but this shocked me to understand the importance of keeping an open mind and to know and respect others who have seen the paranormal. I was heading with two plastic containers to buy the beans and tortillas that afternoon, I had to go through an area where a creek went all the way to Lake Nicaragua. There was still a lot of forested areas there, and there were encroaching buildings that were being built but not finished yet. The road I walked on was in between the forest and the creek. As one got closer to my grandma's neighborhood, the unfinished buildings were apparent, and the creek became part of a waterway, which, to get across, you had to walk on a bridge to get to the road that led to the outskirts of the city of Managua, which is where my grandma's house was, in an area called America's Number 2. Anyway, on the way to buy mom's beans and tortillas, I had no ill feelings on the road. The sun was still up, it was about 6.30pm. Since we're near the equator, there is still sunlight at that time. It took me approximately one hour to do this. I had no worries since the people around the area knew me. On the way back to Grandma's, as I got close to where the new buildings were being constructed, it was already dark and there was a full moon that night. It was 7.47 p.m. I always had a watch with me. I like watches a lot. Anyway, as I had finished crossing the bridge, I came up to a building which had not been finished and had no roof or doors, and it was about 150 yards from the creek and the wood line. The moon happened to light the building and leave places dark on the ground and light up the mid-level places from around 5 feet and up as the moonlight hit the building at an angle. As I walked in front of a door by the road, suddenly I heard a growling sound, like a dog growl. I was never fond of dogs since they always seemed to chase me and I had one bite me when I was six. Anyway, as I heard this sound, I don't know if it was curiosity or stupidity, but I decided to investigate by backtracking and seeing if in fact it was a wild dog with rabies, since rabies at that time was rampant in our country. This way I knew whether to expect an attack or just get a rock in one of my hands in case it decided to mess with me. Well, to my horrific surprise, I came up to the door of the building and found myself to be about 11 feet from a thing 
that I've only seen in the movies, like The Howling. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. This thing slowly began to rise from a hunched position to where the moonlight hit its face, and mind you, this was a one-story building with no roof. This building was at least eight and a half feet tall, yet this thing's head was maybe five inches above it. I was having trouble speaking. I was in a state of awe and disbelief. This thing had pointy black ears and a mid-sized snout like a German shepherd, and it had a yellow glow to its eyes. Its hands were like a raccoon's, but with a curb to them. Suddenly my reaction came, and I spoke out loud and said, No! At this point the creature seemed to hear me, and immediately turned its head to look at me. At this point I had two choices, stay and hope it didn't eat me, or run the mile left to my grandma's house. I can tell you the second option looked better. I immediately turned and ran in the direction of grandma's house. I felt the thing behind me, but I didn't dare to look. I ran, and the funny thing is I didn't even drop my mom's containers. I ran all the way to my grandma's house and I ran inside. In those days, grandma always left the door open. I ran past my mom and my grandma and rushed to the kitchen. I took the steak knives that my grandma had and told my mom and grandma, it's after me and I'm ready. At this time, my mom and grandma tried to convince me that I was okay and to put the knives down. I did not put the knives down until I was sure the monster was not showing up to attack grandma's house. I had nightmares and horrible dreams for about two years after this incident. This story comes from paranormal at about.com. What I'm going to tell you has never been told by me to anybody, with the exception of my mother, because I still believed whatever I saw might come to hunt me. Forty-five years ago, I was living in Poza Rica, Veracruz, Mexico, with my family. I was four years old at the time. I remember that it was during summer, because we had just come back from our vacation. When we came back to our neighborhood, one of the neighbors told my mom that she lost her baby boy and that it was the third tragedy around that colony within the month. I recall my mom telling my dad that night that she was very scared and wanted us to move as soon as possible. My dad told her that we would. When she was done talking to him, she called me and my brother and gave us instructions to not go outside after dark no matter what. About two nights later, we were celebrating my brother's birthday and after the celebration, my mom cleaned the house and put us to sleep. Sometime that night, I woke up to go drink some water and I noticed that it was really bright inside the kitchen because the moonlight was coming through the window above the kitchen sink. I was too small to get a cup from the cupboards, so I pulled a chair from our dining table and put it right in front of the sink. At that moment, I happened to look into my neighbor's house across from our home and noticed that there was someone or something very big in front of their door, and it seemed to be holding something. When I got closer to the window to see what it was holding, I realized that whatever it was standing there was taller than the door. It had pointed ears and had no clothing on. When I saw the ears, I jumped and my chair made a loud noise. The thing turned and looked at me, and I saw its face. It looked like a freaking police dog with bright red eyes on two legs, and what it was holding was a baby. I got off the chair, ran to the room to my baby brother's bed and held him for a long time. I was so scared that whatever I saw was going to come through the door and take us away. The next morning we went to church 
and our neighbor told my parents that her friend across from our home lost her child the night before and nobody knew what had happened. When I heard that, I started crying. My mom asked me what was wrong and I told her what I'd seen. She told me that we would be moving sooner and to never tell anyone what I saw, and I haven't until now. From then on, I have this nightmare once in a while. I see myself as a kid, walking and being chased by the beast that I saw. Years later, when I was 25 years old, I went to the fair and entered the tent of a fortune-telling woman. She held my hand and told me a few things that were happening to me at the time. Suddenly, she pushed my hand away and told me to go away. When I asked her why, she said that I had a shadow and that sooner or later it was going to find me. It was a very dark, mean thing looking for me. I asked her to help me, but she shook her head and said, No, baby, he won't hurt you. It would hurt whoever is around you and whoever tries to help you, so please go. Until now, I have my dark moments when I'm always looking around for any strangers coming toward me. I try to avoid the woods which the fortune-telling woman told me to. This really did happen to me. Well, that was it for South America and Central America. But of course, there are more sightings that I haven't mentioned. This will be one of the last sightings videos. I think I'll make at least one more. But for various reasons, I won't be doing them anymore. I think possibly I'm going to start to read some of the posts I've written on my blog. We'll see. I'm not quite sure yet. Anyway, be safe and take care and I'll see you next time.